on. You're good. Good morning. Today we have a few classes here, and we're excited that you're all here this morning. Um, we've got a great presentation for you, and we, we're very, very happy to have Odd Rod here on campus. So without further ado, I'll let, I'll let him get started. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. All right, so this is uh, pretty much I can an interview, and you guys are interviewing me. So uh, if the show turns out bad, it's your fault, okay? I expect you guys to ask questions. Ask as many as you can, we have an hour, and then I'm gonna run it back, I guess, a few more times here. It's the first time I've ever had a show set up like this, but I'm so happy to see so many people here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Odd Rod. I'm a spoken word artist, but my story is much more interesting than the spoken word. I tell my story in rhyme, and it begins when my mom was on drugs for most of my life, and my, my father wasn't around at the time. And my brother, in 1996, he passed away of brain cancer, and when he passed away, something happened. All my friends were selling drugs. And before you, I go any further, I gotta let you know I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so it's, it's, I'm pretty much from the hood part of it, and everybody around me was selling drugs, and I decided to go against the odds. I named myself Odd Rod, and I started writing poetry because Tupac inspired me to write poetry through his rhymes and him expressing himself. He let me know that it was okay to write, and this is how I've been surviving all this time. When my brother died of brain cancer. I felt like I was keeping his life by documenting every part of my life. I felt like I needed to leave, live two lives. And, and that's what I've been doing. Anybody got a question right now? Let's just kick it off. Anybody? Any question? Don't be afraid. There's too many people in. Don't make me feel black. <laughs> yes? Uh, why did you choose spoken word and not another form of artistry? I chose spoken word instead of anything else because when I was listening to Tupac, he wrote a rhyme. And believe it or not, I wrote a suicide poem. First thing, I just heard him and wrote my feelings down. And it was talking about wanting to leave. And then I read it and I was like, Oh, right. I guess I better stay around. This is pretty cool. And ironically, that poem made me want to live my life, and, and it gave me uh, an outlet. And I was like, I, later on, I found out it was it was poetry because I didn't want to rap. It was just that's not my style. But you'll hear when I speak or I perform that the rhythm that I have identifies with rap. But you can tell that I'm I'm, I'm definitely a poet. I, I enjoy the writing aspect of everything. Everybody say, seen me then. I was always kind of different. I was running from home. I felt like everybody close to me was doing me wrong. A lot of people didn't see me. I traveled alone. I named myself Odd Rod when I was out on my own. And while my friends were selling drugs, I was studying math. Why would I worsen a condition that was already bad? You see, if everybody's cool, then I'd rather be hot. I could never let my image be a person I'm not. Ain't notice here was poetry. You should have seen me then, searching for a way to beat the drama I was in. Crack it stole my mama. Don't know what stole my daddy. But you asked me what I died for them, and I will tell you. Gladly. Forgiveness in this warrior was troubled when I came, but I've been writing poetry before I knew her name. You gotta hear my story. See, I'm prepared to fight. I had a lot of lonely days and suicidal nights, but God allowed me poetry. He said that I'm his prince, that though I wasn't meant to be, I'm still no accident. So when I write, I'm living. Breath be in my pen. I was dead before all this. You should have seen me then. And now to reach my city, I scribble down survival. I got them trying to bootleg poems before the book's arrival. Their kids are looking at me. My past provides their future. Lyrically murdered in their rooms and I've been named the shooter. I claim full responsibility. The blood is on my hands. Writing things in ways that all my people understand. Ain't worried about no critics. Won't level with no scholars. You can see accomplishments through medals on my collar. The silver hands for lives I saved, the golden wings for flight, the purple heart for loving those who didn't treat me right. So lay your eyes upon me and tell me that you're proud. Instead of being dead or jailed, I've been rocking crowds. And that is rare where I come from. Survival is unheard. Not everyone is blessed to be immortalized in words. Thus, I live forever. My losses carry wins because I've come from nothing yet. Well, you should have seen me then. Thank you. I want to let y'all know that I did fall on the sidewalk on the way in here. <laughs> Thanks for that. Why don't we do something about that? Welcome to Iowa. Man, man I've been in Iowa for the last few days, man, and I saw there was a lot of open land, field, just nothing. I saw, I saw a possum just crossing the plane, but I don't know where he was headed. 
he was going somewhere, and I stopped, and he stopped. <laughs> and I kept going, and he kept going. But I've enjoyed it. I was at uh, Northeast Iowa Community College yesterday, so I drove down, and tonight I'm going to another one. I don't know, somewhere else, five hours from here. Yeah, so I get on the road as soon as I leave here. Anybody have a question? Yes, thank you. relationship that I had um, and, and I, I absolutely know that I'm here for a reason I wouldn't be this far um, it's been an amazing journey I've been on the road for uh, since January 29th on January 26th I lost my father um, and I knew the tour was coming up and if I would have took this tour that I would miss his funeral he died unexpectedly but I still went on tour and, and I left my family but my form of mourning has been performing and helping people through my story so I know that I'm blessed and this journey is so weird. Like I say, I'm on rock because I defeated everything that was around me. Um, throughout everything that I was going through, I ended up um, making it to college and on a full scholarship and graduating. And that was weird. It's so weird how that happened, but it did. I know that my book has already been written. All I'm doing is just turning the pages as long as I'm obedient to what I'm, I'm listening to. And this, this right here, this journey alone is, is proof that you can live your dreams. I got fired from my job in November. I got fired and I, I worked there for 12 years. I was a longshoreman in Jacksonville. A lot of y'all might not know what a longshoreman is, do you? In this part of the country. We import, export cargo on a ship and pretty much just load the ship. Drag the chains, it's a tedious job. But I'd done it for 12 years and they fired me because um, I was pretty much living my dreams. I requested some days off and they denied them and I took them anyway, like boss. <laughs> so when I came back, I was like, uh, uh, I started working, let me work four hours. And he was like, yo, go to the office. So I go to the office and I was like, uh, I walk in too, like I just know I'm, I'm, I'm strong. I was like, yo, uh, so uh, what took you guys so long? And I get in the office and they, they, they let me go and I decided to fight for my job. And I got my job back. I got it back um, through the union and saying some curse words, which was pretty cool. <laughs> and then I quit two weeks later. <laughs> Like a boss. It's pretty cool. One good thing is that my mom's no longer on drugs. It's a blessing. She's been clean for about seven years. And I got a seven-year-old sister because of that. Um, one thing about an addict is they would put down one habit and they would pick up another. And my mom started eating a lot. And I lost my grandma to diabetes. I didn't want to lose my mom to the same fate. So what I would encourage her to lose weight. I encourage her to exercise. She always felt like if she was slimmer, that she would be beautiful because of what I was saying, but she wasn't getting what I was saying. So I had to write a poem to let her know that she was beautiful. Everybody say plus size. Plus size. She said, I think I'm rather fat and I don't know what to do. Nobody's gonna like me because I'm 282. Nobody's gonna dig me if I'm big in the waist and I've been speaking with some doctors who could cut me and paste. She compares herself to TV and she don't look the same. It seems she'd rather be a project than to be as she came. But as she came, it's just as gorgeous as the image she fiends to have a body like. Her prototype ain't meant to be lean. No, her prototype ain't meant to fit the mannequin's jeans, but she won't ever reach a high with all this low self-esteem. You see, she dreamed of being skinny. What a waste of a thought. There are people that would trade her with the image she saw, and she ain't gotta cut and paste to be like everyone else, cause I'd have met some slimmer women who should bury themselves. I said it. It said that everything you know makes up the person you are, so if you're feeling like you're flying, baby, you are a star, and there's no way that you can fall if you don't ever look down, and you will never find your beauty calculated in pounds. See, when I wanna treat myself, I plus size my meal. And when I wanna treat my car, I plus size the wheels. Oh, it's a beautiful deal to get much more than you needed. I let my vocals be your vocals, trying to get you to see it. I tell you nothing is more beautiful than how you believe that your gorgeousness is nothing that you wear on your sleeve. That your outfits are amazing because you wear them with ease and you ain't got a problem showing you so everyone sees. Don't ever worry about your body. You are sent from the sky. That's the reason why it's easier to show that you're fly. So let the church say amen if y'all can feel what I write. Your inner beauty makes the outer such a wonderful sight. Develop pride within your fashion. Baby, dress you in strut, and you ain't got to cut. It pays on got to suck in your gut. You were gorgeous as you came, and there's no need to discuss making changes. You are stainless, and your size is a plus. Thank you. I 
take pictures at every school I go to. And um, it's very important to me so I can show my mom that I'm actually doing something with myself out here. Um, I'm gonna do a group photo with you guys and let you know that now. So you gotta fix, make sure you got the salad out of your teeth if you had salad this morning. Um, but you pretty much can stand up where you are. I'm gonna jump there, down here and someone's gonna come up here and use my phone for my Instagram and we'll take a photo together. All right, is that okay? Make sure you're in the photo. The light back there is gonna cause some problems. Sorry, I'm like a little photographer. But make sure you're in the photo because it looks like it's a lot of people in here. You guys are actually doing it on some other schools that I've gone to. So congratulations. I know you're here for extra credit and you don't care about me, but it's Black History Month and I'm glad that you're here. Does anybody have a question? Yes? What's your Instagram name? At odd underscore rod. Right, that's easy. Yeah, um, I got cards and stuff over there. Make sure you grab a card on the way out. It has all my information. I got stuff on iTunes and YouTube. And oh, man, I'm turning poetry into something else. Did you guys expect to hear this type of story today? Me either. <laughs> it's such a blessing to do what I do. It's such a blessing. Like I don't, I don't really involve myself with too many uh, poets and writers because I'm so me and my story is my own and I'm succeeding. I have now been, um, I'm proud to know, I've, I've been on tour, but while I was on tour, they called me and told me that I'm spoken word artist of the year in the college market. And, uh, and that's a big deal, it's my third year in. And I'm also entertainer of the year. I don't know how I got that one, but I'll take it. So I'm thankful, like this is good. Uh, through all my dark days, I found, I found light, and I'm finding light in helping others. So this is my, my philanthropy, it's cool. Y'all paid me to be here, but. I still get it, this is my thing. Anybody got a question? Thanksgiving. My mom decided to cook Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, it was a big deal because my grandma always cooked Thanksgiving dinner. And I was kind of worried about going because my mom was never in the kitchen when my grandma did such a thing. So I knew that my mom probably couldn't cook as good as my grandma. And she invited me. She said, baby, I want you home for Thanksgiving. She'd never done that before. It was a big deal for me to be home. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll be there. I'll go home. And I did, and, and I ate Thanksgiving dinner, it was great. And then there was a dessert table, and it had a lot of cakes on the table, and then it was one pie. Now this is a diverse crowd, but we do know that African Americans don't cook pumpkin pie, we cook sweet potato, sweet potato pie, yes. My mom, my mom didn't know that. My mom, my mom cooked a pumpkin pie. Then she failed. Horrible pie. And I told her, this is horrible. I know that y'all like it's harsh, but she's been through much more. I told her from the bathroom. <laughs> I'm knocking on the door, Mom, what's, what's, what was in the pie? Turns out it was what wasn't in the pie. That was the problem. So I was telling her, I was like, what did you do wrong? She was like, well, your sister was reading the instructions as I was making it, and um, it, she read off eggs. She read that we were supposed to have eggs, and I know I didn't have any eggs, but why is it on the table? Why is it in the middle of the cakes? Put it out there anyway. And I wrote a poem about it. <laughs> Everybody say pumpkin pie. pumpkin pie. The pumpkin pie I offended. It wasn't prepared at its best. But what are the terms of the mother bird's worms that she hustles back to the nest? You see, my mother did more than dig tunnels. Her burdens were heavy to tote, for she had been wounded by hunters, and they shot her down with their dope. Lost all that she knew and became a victim of cracking cocaine. A bird at its low that barely could float but knew how to hold on to planes. They say things get better with time. I watched my watch watching me back. The ticks and the talks of her heart and my clock were forcing me close to the tracks. Where I laid me away from my problems and I laid me away from my woes. I watched Batman watch over Gotham. Well, God was with me, I suppose. Supposed to be dead as a teen, but I made it to college instead. I fought for my low self-esteem. I picked up a pen and I bled. My mother did all that she could. She wanted to be there, she did. But drugs are like termites on wood, and they ate away thoughts of her kids. We all have our faults and our fights. My mother fought her, fought her faults for years. Where I was influenced to write, she was influenced by peers. Was her who decided to change. Was her who decided to live. We both held our heads through the rain, and that is what landed us here. I got my mom back, y'all should know. She's been such a force on my rhyme. Now God may not come when you call, but when he arrives, it's on time. That's why I say more than just poems. My life has been more than just verse. I think of my mom and perform. I've watched her come back from her worst. And as bad as that pie was prepared, I ate it with little regret. For the chef had been bruised past repair, but she shows that she ain't gave up yet.
right, your turn. Questions? Any questions, doesn't matter. Yes? Um, it was tough because the drug dealers in my neighborhood at the time were the heroes. They had everything that we wanted. They had the jewels, they had the cars, they had the nice clothes. Um, and, and all of my peers were following behind those guys. They were like the, the lead recruits. And I saw that and I saw the, the results of it through my mom's life. But my mom being on drugs, I'm like, why would I go out there and sell drugs if I see what it's doing to my own family? And then I looked at it like, I need to keep my eyes on my goal. That if I stay positive, stay strong, that somehow, some way, that the end would be better than my beginning. And to this day, I still keep that. I keep my eyes on the goal rather than what's directly in front of me. Keeps me moving. I've driven through two snowstorms in the last three weeks. It's crazy, because I just keep going. And then I'm from Florida, so I don't know any better. I had a Jeep, four wheel drive, so I'm driving on top of snow. I can't even see the road anymore. I eventually pulled over when God was like, yo, you gotta stop being stupid, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I actually pulled over and, and got a hotel, but I always look at the end result. I feel like at, I gotta make it to that light that's supposed to be at the end of the tunnel. But if I detour in the middle of the tunnel, I can see the results already. And as I grew older, I started seeing my friends getting locked up and killed and robbed and going through that turmoil. They might have you know, had some nice shoes from what they did or got some nice clothes, but the end result was that they didn't get the, a chance to enjoy it because they were gone. And, um, and I started seeing the results. I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna stay on my path, headed to this light. Simple as that. I don't need to be the person that, if six goats fall off a cliff, I'm not gonna be the goat that's gonna go to the cliff and fall off. Like, oh, well, you don't wanna go that way? Just go <laughs> this way. It doesn't, it's just common sense, man. We, we know the end result of doing things like that. So. Questions? It's two minutes, there you go. There we are, here we go. Yes? The biggest crowd you ever performed live in front of? About three, 4,000 people. It was at, um, actually at the school that I graduated from, University of North Florida. It was an incoming uh, freshman, and they chose me to speak um, in Jacksonville. So it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, I also opened up for Tyrese. That was all right. I killed Tyrese. <laughs> Did it on him. Did, I got sold so many CDs. Because it was a, a, a pleasant surprise to hear something like that before an RB concert. I'm almost, maybe, I'm not sure yet, they got, they're working on getting me um, to open up for John Legend back home, so we'll see what happens. You had a question? Yeah, I just, you mentioned your grandma. So I was wondering, did you spend a lot of time with your grandma growing up? Oh, Lord, my grandma was everything to me. She used to call herself Odd Grandma. <laughs> She's like, cause I, I remember naming myself Odd Rod, and I'd be talking to young ladies, and they would not take me serious about my name. So I, yo, my name Odd Rod. Rod, Rodrig, what's your name? I said Odd Rod. <laughs> my grandma, she was like, I said what grandma? Before she passed, she passed in 2004. But before she passed, she said, you know what I want for my birthday? I want a, a tag on the front of my car that says Odd right, Grandma, and I actually had it made. Um, and it, it meant the world to me because nobody else could tell me who I was after that. Like, I, I was validation enough for me. My grandma believed in me. You can't tell me nothing. La, 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 la. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I felt great. It gave me confidence that somebody that I loved and raised me um, believed in me. Because she took custody of us when my mom was out on drugs. Questions? What do you guys do around this place? What's, what's going on? What do you do besides school? Uh, Start asking y'all questions, huh? Pray. Huh? Pray. Pray? I work at Target. Oh, that's awesome. What about those credit cards? <laughs> Man, you gotta get that stuff straightened out. Tarje? Anybody got some questions? Why is it so... Do you, do you yes. What is your favorite personal poems? My favorite personal poems? Some of my most recent poems. Um, it'll probably be, probably, uh, wait a minute, before I carry on, is anyone in here going to be um, in here for the next couple sessions? You guys are going to have to hear this stuff all over again. And you better act like you don't know the jokes. You better laugh. Because if you're sitting there knowing that you heard it, just, just fake laugh. And it's cool if you open your mouth when you laugh. It makes me feel like you're really laughing. Just laugh. 
wide open mouth laugh is a real ha 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 ha. Not not that. I don't want that. My favorite poems, man, have been coming along recently. Um, as I'm knowing that I'm doing this, like this is my third year in, but I'm 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 able to tell more of my story because I have an audience. You know, when I was writing to myself, I was writing to myself, but now I write in a manner that I challenge myself. I don't curse in my work anymore. My first album, I cursed in, and I was. I don't know, 26 or so. So I started cursing in my, my work because I had a lot on my chest. It's thugging. My second album, I stopped. It's more challenging to not write curse words. So easy to write curse words. I'd be like, yeah, well, what rhymes with get? Oh, yeah, I can put that. I'm not going that route no more. So now I challenge myself as a writer, and it's been working out very good for me. I, I enjoy it. Um, when I got to college, there was a young, well, I was on full scholarship, and that scholarship came along with a uh, mentor. Jacksonville is a segregated town. You got a black side of town, you got a white side of town. Uh, I went to an all black high school, unfortunately. Um, and it has a lot of growing to do back where I'm from. As you can see with this trial that just happened, it's a lot that's going on in Jacksonville. Um, but I was forced to have a mentor. And he was a he was a forty something year old white guy. Had no idea how he could relate to me, because I happened to be black at the time. <laughs> what? We've all heard that it takes a village to raise a child. Everybody say village helper. Village helper. Can't you see I'm happy? You see the way I smile? I'm a good result of when the village raised the child. My mama did what she could do. My grandma did the most. It had to be her entity that kept the family close. My grades got me to college. I'm thankful for the chance. It must have been my grandpa's hands that paid me in advance. Now college was a journey. I didn't think I'd make it. The leaders in my family had never graduated. And then there came a mentor, an opposite of me. He volunteered and took the time to push me to succeed. What a great connection. I hadn't thought of that. Find a friend who once had been the very place I'm at. Clearly he was needed. Wisdom comes with age. What's to say he lived the way through choices that he made? He showed me how to budget. He taught me how to spend. And when I needed comfort, he provided me a friend. We have the greatest friendship. It took no time to build it. He saw the growing child and said that he would join the village. And I can't be more grateful. I can't be more proud. One applause can sometimes sound like millions in a crowd. So through my life, I'll thank him. And hopefully he'll see his works will reimburse with him. The mentor I will be. idea. Uh, I, I just keep going. Um, there, if I had to guess, I don't know, maybe 700 to 1,000. They're not all in my head just yet, but they're, some of them just didn't deserve. And some poems I had to leave behind. I wrote as a young man. I used to have a show. I started doing open mics at my school in college because I was bored. I didn't want to join a fraternity and I didn't play sports, but I knew that I needed an outlet. So I started an open mic. I had like five or 10 people. I was so poetic. I had candles, yep. I had a rug, I had a stool, some incense. Shame on me. So poetic. I had four people, 20 chairs, first time. By the time I left college though, I had 200 plus people showing up every month to express themselves and show their talent. So it grew. And, um, after I left college, I'm like, man, I want to keep it going. So you guys are, you're, on, you're my show now. So uh, that's it, another dream came true. <laughs> Questions? Yes. I went to college for multimedia, graphic design, a degree that I do not use. <laughs> However, I use it for myself. I got an album, a CD, where I design all that stuff on my own, and I know what great design is. Uh, I know, um, I feel like I went to college for the skill. And in college, you know, a lot of people graduate and don't necessarily use their, their degree. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. You got that, you got that skill for a reason. Like if you graduated with a nursing degree and you turn out being something else, you might get stuck on a highway and have to deliver a baby or something. And then that's when that degree kicks in. If you use it one time in your life, you're fine. But in this world, 
it's turning into a situation where a lot of people are graduating and they have a degree and they show that degree and it's not as impressive anymore to the workforce. Are you guys knowing this? Right now it's experiencing this type of thing. There are lions out there and there are sheep. You make it your business to be a lion and you'll be okay. So you get your degree. Make sure don't ever feel like you wasted your degree because you can't find the job that you want. You gotta go after what you want as hard as you can because you might be one of the people that are actually align and get what you want. And, and just find your way. Don't ever feel like a degree is gonna guide you. It's gonna be you that's gonna get you where you wanna go. Never wanted to be a guy. I, I even interned at a graphic design agency. I was uncomfortable. I was in a write poetry every time they saw me. So they actually came and had me write some commercials. Like I, used, I was used in um, some crime prevention commercials in Jacksonville, wrote and performed in them. And it was like, yo, we see you always writing. Could you write in some commercials? It, it was a white agency, all white agency. You come in and there was black crime going on in Jacksonville. So they were chosen to do the crime prevention. How could they relate or do a commercial to a community that they know nothing of in this agency? So they stopped me and was like, could you write for this situation? I was like, sure, no problem. Um, then I was kind of hesitant because I was, it was like, well, could you perform in some commercials? I was like, I don't know, I still gotta go back to the hood. I know what happens. Because it's telling somebody to turn into somebody else who has an illegal weapon. So I had to write like three poems to talk about that. Many were like, yo, uh, we'll give you $1,000 per commercial. Yeah, what, what, what a pen? Come on. <laughs> you got cameras rolling now? <laughs> so I did the commercials, and, um, and honestly, it turned out really good. Because there was like a girl named Dreshawna Davis and Shanice Holmes. They were both um, separate occasions. They were nine years old each. And they were just, one was playing a video game, one was reading a book in the house and a bullet, a straight bullet comes through the window and kills him. And nobody was saying anything about it. And that's when the community had to you know, step out. And I, I felt, I had a little sister that was the same age. And I just thought about it, there's no way I'm not gonna say anything. Questions? You guys don't have much time with me. Did the hood recognize you from the commercials? Yeah, I had a, um, I had a nice car at the time. I had an 81 Cutlass Supreme, it was 24. So I'm, I was plugged in, everybody know me anyway, I mean, and then I did it boldly. A lot of like people that were in the streets grabbed me. I was like, man, I'm glad that you did what you did. Kids noticed a lot, but I, I was it was cool because that's when I started touring to uh, to schools, um, middle schools and stuff. Because they would see me on commercials, like, can we book you to come to the school and talk to the kids? And I'd drive the car to the school and let them know that you ain't have to sell drugs to get this. Because um, I worked hard and I had that car in college, 81 color Supreme, uh, some 24s on it, some music in it. And then I wanted to sell the car. And uh, I put a for sale sign in it, drove around Jacksonville. And I got stopped at a light. And there was a navigator, a Lincoln navigator. It had some spinning wheels on it, some 26 inch spinning wheels. And it was painted. And I was like, oh, cool. It was a black guy driving. And it was a white guy in the passenger seat. The white guy starts doing all the talking. The black guy continues to look forward. I was, I was kind of disturbed. I wanted to tell the black guy that I'd let him know that he was free. You don't have to do that anymore. Oh, yeah. For what? What? So the white guy was like, yo, how much do you want for it? And I, I was like, I told him how much. And he's like, well, pull over. So I pull over and I go to shake his hand. I go around to the passenger side to shake his hand and he doesn't raise his hand. I'm like, yo, what's wrong with you? You, know, you got to greet. I started to pull his hand up and shake it myself. Then I looked to the back of the truck and there was a wheelchair back there. Turns out he was a quadriplegic and he bought the car. It's about six or seven years ago. His name's Daniel. That's one of my best friends now, that's my brother. Because he inspired me to live my life, no matter what. There's nothing that he could do with that car. And he bought it. I was like, man, I'm around here complaining about this and that. And you, you're not letting anything stop you. Never let him go. You'll find a video on my YouTube channel um, dedicated to Daniel. Make sure you get a car so you can see that stuff. We were at a month after he bought the car, we had one of his favorite places, uh, is a strip club. <laughs> Don't judge him. His lap still works. And the girl gets up and she moves away and he looks at me and he says, you know, I can't learn how to trust him. I don't know how to feel. And ever since the accident, these women can't be real. What a hurtful feeling. He's a quadriplegic. They can say they love him deep, but how does he believe it? Yeah, they can kiss and hug him, and they can play pretend, but enemies are even worse when camouflaged as friends. 
Life is gonna struggle. Money couldn't fix the life he had before the day he had the accident. And here I am, a friend to him. And it ain't been that long, but God will sometimes orchestrate collabos on a song. Through me, he has his legs again. Through me, he has his arms. And I'll be there to fend for him if someone tries to harm. No, I can't make them genuine. No, I can't make them real. No, I can't make them love him like he doesn't have those wheels. But I can shoot his bird for him. And through me, he can gesture. Chick, be gone. You're on your own. I won't be your investor. And he says that he can't trust him. And I say that I can't either. Relationships involve the weak that often date the cheaters. He shouldn't deal with either. I tell him to be still. That I feel like they lie, so I prescribe myself that pill. Loneliness is sad, they say, but what about deceit? What of those who plot on you the moments that you sleep? You have to weigh your pains, I guess, but he has seen enough. So I change to a topic that is better off discussed, like how he has inspired me. I bury my complaints. He could live his life upset, but he decides to paint. The perfect picture put to life. I love his train of thought. He smiles. He has the biggest heart, and he lives like he can walk. Questions? Yes. You said your mom was an addict? Yes. You grew up with her? So how did you forgive her? Huh? How did you forgive her? Oh man, my grandma. My grandma taught me forgiveness. One of the greatest gifts ever. I guess. My father wasn't around either. And he came into my life maybe 21, 22, at 21 and 22. And I had to realize that I really wanted a relationship with him. That the anger and resentment that I held in my heart would have been a blockage for me to have a good relationship with a father. And it was so cool because I got to experience maybe 11 or 12 years with a great guy that, you know, created me. So um, I didn't let anything stop me. I feel like those are, those are blockers, like being angry at somebody, being uh, resentful will keep you from having the best parts of life. Um, my love for my mom was bigger than my anger for her, if that makes sense. And um, I got a great relationship with my mom. Yep, she's so cool. She's so, she's so ghetto. <laughs> she is. This is ridiculous. Bad fucking pocket. Bad. Question. Yes. What's the question mark for? The question mark. My nickname Odd Rod. Like seriously, that's what everybody called me. And my symbol is just that. It's a wonder how I've gotten how as far as I have. I'm so different, and I'm I applaud. I applaud being different. I applaud myself being different because in the environment that I was in, like to come up in the way that I came up is such a blessing. And one, a lot of people be like, "You from Jacksonville?" And people be in Jacksonville asking me if I'm from Jacksonville because I'm like that. I, I love music. I love uh, all types of music. You wouldn't believe the type of music that I love, but I love all types of music, and uh, and I will sing songs that you would not believe. I'm not here today because I'm not paid for that. No, I'm just saying, but I, I love everything. I love culture. I love people. I love learning stuff. I love s sliding across your sidewalks in Iowa when I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I definitely fail. I was like, man, and y'all got my posters all around this place. <laughs> <laughs> my phone fell out of my hand. It was ugly. I saw a girl walking really slow. I'm like, what? I gotta pass her. And that's what happened. <laughs> I had to pass her. I said, I see why she was walking slow. Man. It's just straight ice. Y'all okay with that? We got a blizzard coming. I have a flight in the morning. I hope it's not canceled. In the morning? I know, right? It's like 8 o'clock in the morning. So I'm praying. Yep. Questions? Yes. What kind of Jeep are you driving? Liberty? I'm not driving one now. I had that on the other tour. And... I was, uh, my flight was delayed because of the storm in Pennsylvania. And I was on the turnpike that day with all 150 cars. I didn't get to them because uh, the Jeep Liberty after 14 days decided to overheat on the side of the turnpike. Yeah, I'm, looking, I'm stuck on the side. You look at my Instagram, you'll see me taking a picture on the side of the road. My feet started getting cold. And luckily, um, one of those service people stopped by and helped me. And I left that baby. I sure did, got me another rental car at the next exit. And I still got to call the rental car company to sort things out with them about the money that I had to spend on another rental car. But uh, yeah, I, I, it was a good Jeep because it had four by four. I come here and they gave me a Chevy Impala, I'm terrified. It's like, y'all know y'all got snowstorms, right? Y'all got nothing better? Nothing at all, nothing, four by four, no? I drive a Wrangler. You wanna, you wanna lend it to me? <laughs> I'll give you an Impala for it. Don't believe in stuff. <laughs> Anybody have some questions? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. What kind of art do I put on the cover of my CDs? Yeah. I don't know, this is the uh, second one that I did. It's a picture of me with my new car, or my new old car. I got another old school. I like old school cars. I got a 71 Pontiac Le Mans. But if you look closely, this photograph is taken. I'm looking up into the rain. Just like I'm accepting what people usually run from. I'm accepting it as far as I'm concerned. It's my blessings. Um, and this album is more than just a poet. Because there's a lot of poets out there, but I felt like I was more. Because I don't really do the slam poetry or none of that stuff. I like to tell my life story. And it happens to be in rhyme. Questions? Yes. You ever performed internationally before? Not yet. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Um, this is like my biggest year that I've had so far. I just needed to figure things out. The first year I was terrified. I go and speak for an hour and I go home about my business. But now I like to engage questions. I love it when you guys ask questions because it, it makes the show a little more real. Because everybody usually has questions, but y'all wait for me to walk to my car. It takes me two hours to get in my car because you got. You know, you know what I, um, I, I can understand what you were saying about this man. I got another place to go. You don't want to be rude, but I'm giving you the opportunity to ask the questions now, which makes it better. Ask. Now, what kind of classes do we have in here? All kinds. What, you got art class? Art, art appreciation, art appreciation. Is this the whole school? Uh, no. Is this the whole school? Yeah, seven classes in here. Yeah, um, it was a teacher's, else, teacher's break today. I'm the teacher. I'm working. Oh, y'all yeah. get a break. <laughs> y'all got good grades? Yep. Yeah, y'all yeah, would say that. <laughs> you know your teachers over there. They know. They got good grades? Oh, yeah. Are you giving them to them? Well, we have done, yeah, midterms. Oh, really? Midterms next month. Well, good luck on your midterms. They're here. Yeah. Are you guys okay with this show? Yep. <laughs> this better than class? Oh, yeah. Teachers over there. <laughs> Making a list, checking it twice. <laughs> Questions? Yes. What other hobbies do you do? Oh, the cars. Cars. I man, I just uh, I like to design them. I love uh, putting together old school cars and putting big wheels on them. And uh, other than that, I probably can sing a little bit, but I don't. I don't consider it a hobby. Um, that's that's mainly it. Eating. I like nice restaurants and different places. I went to, um, where did I go? The Stout last night? The Irish pub? It was a lot drunker than there. Man. It's like he was talking like he was in a helicopter. No reason, the whole time. And then it was upsetting because I couldn't talk. Like, you know, I couldn't do anything. And by the time it was time for me to go, I broke my meal and I get up and walk out. He's walking out with me. Like, you should have been left. He was there before I got there. And then when I, I left, he was leaving. I was like, man, bad timing. Y'all got a, a movie theater. Clinton 8 or something? Yeah. Was it open last night? Yeah. Nobody was there. I was working. Really? Y'all yeah. didn't have a big crowd there. What happened? I don't know. I was never busy during the week. Really? Is that the only movie theater in town? Yep. Yeah. Ooh. No. <laughs> we went to the Applebee's, too. That sucked. <laughs> I think Applebee's across the nation suck. I was in um, Pittsburgh last week, Applebee's suck. I think their display, like when you're at a restaurant like that, the display of what they bring out to you should be nice. Like make sure it's cute. Like you want to look at your food like, oh, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> they brought it out and I got the chicken and some uh, potatoes and it was on the skillet. The potatoes were falling off the skillet. It's just like, and the chicken was running from the potatoes. <laughs> like seriously, I didn't even eat, man. I had to leave. I was like, listen, I can't, I can't take this. I'll pay for my my my, my drink. And I'll just go. I didn't eat it. It was just bad. That was my second experience with it. I, Applebee's is horrible. Let's just let's just go ahead and say it. Applebee's is they don't care about people at all. There's no way to fix it. She was like, yo, um, well, I'm so sorry. Um, can we bring you anything, a soup or anything? Now that I've complained, I know the rule about accepting food after the complaint. I used to be so afraid because my grandma would be in a drive through and she'd get something and it wouldn't be right. She'd pull up and stop. And she'd look in the bag and she'd be like, oh, they left the tomatoes off. Jack in reverse and back up. And I'd be in the passenger seat like, no, come on, no. Don't, don't, let's go to, let's go to the grocery store and we'll put tomatoes on it. What you don't do is give the food back to them for them to fix. 
because you don't know how you're going to get it back. I just feel like you're going to do something bad to it. Well, I'll teach you how to complain. My hand all on it. <laughs> just don't trust it. I don't trust it. So he's like, yeah, we can get you some soup or whatever. No, no, how about nothing? Let's just go ahead. And, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Slide, slide those potatoes and all that back in the bag. Questions? Yeah, but no. <laughs> no. Nah. You know what? I'm a fan of the Jaguars because we were happy to have a team, but I'm not a fan of how they play. A lot of times I don't like to discuss that. You don't have to ask that. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. I know we horrible. There's places that I go that, that show me that we're horrible. I was like, yeah, one of my poems has something about the Jaguars and um, and I was like, I usually start it off and be like, yeah, we got a football team in Jacksonville, and here's the sound that it makes. Yeah, that, that's the sound that it makes. <laughs> I'm like, this is exactly, y'all would know, I'm not, I'm not sure if y'all would know this, but Jacksonville is a weird city. They do not like to support much. And if you're winning, we're behind you. But if you're losing, we're not behind you. As a matter of fact, we're far away from you. And people stopped showing up at the games. So they would uh, black out the game so we couldn't see it on TV either. Like, wow, really? Are you gonna punish us? They did. So I, hopefully we do better. Bless their souls. When I was in college, man, there was a young lady that was interested in me. She liked me. She probably loved me. She was a good friend. And I told her she was a friend. She was just a friend. I may have made a mistake because I introduced her to my grandma. Was that a mistake? Yep. Yeah, overall, yes, that's what y'all that's what y'all doing in Clinton. Um, why? Grandma thought she belonged to you. No? Huh? Grandma thought you guys were together? Mm -hmm. No, my grandma knew that was my friend. I was like, Grandma, who's my friend? Grandma liked her. Nah, nah, it wasn't that. Grandma likes everybody. She gives everybody a chance. But what about what the girl thought? Um, she thought it was more. Is it not okay to introduce a friend to my grandma? You need to really like her. Yeah, I mean, I did. We could have grown. It wasn't meant for us to be married because I'm introducing her to my grandma. I didn't know I had to marry somebody to introduce them to my grandma. Is that what's going on in Clinton? No. My grandma's that important? Like, you gotta cross that threshold? Like, you gotta meet them at the marriage? Yes? Yeah. Or can you introduce a friend? So as if it was a dude, I was like, yeah, grandma, look my homeboy. I just felt like she was that cool and meet my grandma. She's the most important person to me and you're a good friend. My grandma might have felt like you guys did because she, uh, she stopped me. The young lady was walking out of the door and she let the girl go. She stopped me and she said, uh, you know, if you don't love this girl like she loves you, then you have to let her go. I had to tell her. Yeah, grandma said you gotta go. Everybody say, use me. Use me, what she said to me. I'm here at your disposal. I'll treat you like my husband, loving. We don't need proposals. And if my ears could smile, they would, for I had heard it all. She promised me forevermore without getting involved. Dogs evolve from thoughts like this, but I'm not one to bark. How could I offer fleas to her who offers me her heart? I've seen this pain myself before. I know that it could kill her. Imagine what could come to me if I became the giver of scorn. She mourned of my departure, but it's better that I leave. I don't know how she loves a man who can't return the deed. So use me is what she said to me. And still, I couldn't do it. I vowed to never break her heart if I could not renew it. What's a good time to take that photo? Well, let's take that photo. Um, is it better that I do it from that angle instead of, because that light is going to cause everybody to look like nothing. Okay, so I could, I'll just go to that end of the room, and I don't know, um, everybody will just stand up behind me. Uh, fortunately, you won't be able to see everybody's faces unless you're extremely tall, but we'll see a lot of hands, because we'll raise our fists. My father's from Africa, he's from Nigeria, and I always raise my fists for my father, because his name, his nickname is Babosha. I uh, mean, father of God, but he, uh, he, I was on tour performing when he passed. So what I would do is I would have the crowd yell Babosha at most schools. But if we just raise our fish, I'll just write it on my Instagram. And I just, there's a lot of people in here. So I just want to show that love. I'm like, look at all these people. 
I didn't know his people. This man, man Mar tell Mardell I said thanks. This is a pretty cool setup. Might come back. <laughs> Let's, uh, here, I'll give you my phone. Y'all wipe your face, man. Brush your teeth real quick. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and stand up, man. Y'all don't have to sit down. Okay, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I'll just get right here in the middle here. And, uh... Y'all look like y'all about to exercise. Is this Pilates? <laughs> you ready? You gonna be able to get everybody? You already got it, huh? Already. Man, it's a big crowd. Man, y'all just ate up a whole lot of school. Y'all gonna see like four people in the other pictures. Y'all ready? It's free if you take more. <laughs> How does it look? That's good? Awesome, awesome. Thank y'all so, so much. Questions, questions. Gather your questions. I know people have questions. Ooh, I can walk around the room. I had no idea that I was able to go this far. Question. Who got a question here? Who has questions? Yes, sir. Where do I want to be at the end of my career? Happy. Extremely happy. Knowing that I've affected the lives of people. Seeing the effect that I've had on people. I think this is the future of motivational speaking. When I was in, uh, when I was in high school, college, a lot of uh, speakers would come through. But they couldn't relate to me. Because I'm, I'm in the hood looking at an empty refrigerator and they would come and tell me about how they made it to Yale. You know, things were different. So for me, it's a lot of people out here suffering and I think I'm the voice of those people. You know, it's hard for you to believe that you'll make it if you haven't met somebody that has made it, that's that close to you. I'm a college student. I'm pretty much you guys. I'm showing you that you can do it as long as you believe. And what better than that? I'm not a 60-something-year-old uh, guy that's walking around with a suit on trying to impress you. This is who I am. And I've been motivating myself, so I figured that it would work for other people. So I'm blessed to be in this position, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We sneak in through the route of poetry, but we give you motivational speaking. Questions? Yes? Where's the rest of your tour going? Um, today I'm supposed to be at Northwest, I think. Is that in um, Council Bluffs? Yeah, I go there, and then next week I go into Illinois. Um, it's just all Midwest. As a matter of fact, I wasn't supposed to be in the Midwest if it was up to a young man. Um, I was on Facebook, and I guess I told a joke on Facebook, but before that, this guy, um, actually, the joke was old. He reviewed it. This guy asked me to be at a conference. He was like, I think you'd be great for the Midwest. You should, you should come to this conference. And I was like, cool. And he was like, um, I'll let you know the information later. He comes back and tells me, well, we looked at your Facebook page and we saw something on there that we felt like a professional wouldn't do in this field. And we, we don't want you to come to the conference. And I was hurt at first, and then I was like, you know what? That's cool. Uh, that's, that's cool. And I wrote a poem. Everybody say, the professional. I try not to wear my resume on my sleeve. Sometimes I need to. 
Because my smiles and Facebook posts don't always leave me all that see-through. Could have made me so much less instead I made me so much more. I gave it all my best and now I see what I'm here for. I always talk about my mama, speak about my brother too. Really wish he hadn't died, but that's what changed my point of view. Had to take and gather wins from everything I had to lose. I done made it through this war. I shouldn't have to show my bruise. That's what brought me here to you. Turn the dark into a light. Ain't got rhymes to waste on rap. You get growth from what I write. Moved around away from mama. Drugs were hard for her to shake. No one ever really thinks about those children that they take. My mama made some bad mistakes. My father missed my childhood days. Those aren't people that I hate. I did well despite their ways. I'm very blessed my grandma took us. She taught us to follow God. I would pray throughout these rhymes and that's how I knew I was odd. I earned a college education. Ain't have to play no ball. Saw some blocks within my life but learned to climb across those walls. I now own my own foundation. I named it Eric's Life. It's strong. I donate to random charities so he somehow lives on. Toured 40 something cities in my first year on the stage. Saw so many students faces. I don't I've been reaching for my page, and all I do is tell my story. This is how I made it through. If it sailed me through my storm, I thought it'd do the same for you. A guy once said I'm not professional, and an old me would have snapped. But instead, I raised my collar, took a breath, and turned my cap. Everybody ain't in church, and people have it very hard. I don't wear it on my shirt, but that don't mean I ain't of God. That don't mean I can't reach people. On my resume, it's tears. I'm finding folks across this nation who now rise against their fears. So I will not retract my statement. I ain't come this far to mute. If you've never seen this struggle, this ain't something you compute. No, it's nothing you can calculate. It's nothing you can fathom. I'm saving soldier after soldier where well, you would have died in battle. So there you have it. There you see. Here's a course for your digestion. The professional is me because I've created my profession. Thank you. And then I, I struck a tour all across the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? Big deal. Like, the guy was a speaker. Turns out he was a speaker, and he was at a, a conference that I was at. And he came away with like three shows, and I came away with 17. And he spoke to me. I said, hey. I said, hey. Not mad. Success has been my best revenge. I'm all across the, where am I now? This is the Midwest, right? Yeah, uh, that happened last year. Right. Don't let anybody tell you who you are and what you're capable of. You got people, it's cool to take constructive criticism, but there are people out there that are set up to just down you and do their best to make you feel like, cause I wrote the poem because I'm like, oh man, that sucks. I wasn't worried about going to the Midwest, uh, to that conference he was talking about, but it was the idea that other people 